good morning. Welcome to Foundry Church. We're glad you're here. Um, I'm going to start us out with a couple quick announcements and then we'll, we'll hop into worship. Uh, one thing, if you haven't heard yet, next Saturday we are doing an outreach in Greer with um, the Agape Church Ministries. And so um, we're doing it, we're partnering with them to do an outreach in the Victor Mill neighborhood and so uh the victor mill neighborhood is a uh, lower to middle income neighborhood with uh, a large diversity of, of people and so uh us agape church greer police uh, are partnering to do some things in that neighborhood we're going to be doing uh helping with voter registration hanging out at the park there and there will be some uh the neighborhood versus the police basketball games going on so uh, that's next Saturday. That will start at two o'clock. Two? Two's what I had in my head. Okay, two o'clock, uh, and that'll be about three hours. And so they ask that we come and 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 serve in that way. So the other thing I want you to know about is we've been promising you some resources, and so uh, those came in the mail yesterday. So make sure you pick up one of these Peacemakers books. This is what we're going to be using to. Uh, lead us during the week as, as we do Bible study during the week and your quiet time and prayer. This will guide you through that process. Um, and so next Sunday when you come, we'll start a series called Peacemakers. And hopefully you have already spent time in the scripture that, that we are going to be covering. And then when you meet next week with your band, you should have plenty to talk about because God will have been speaking into your life as you read the scripture uh, and spend time with God and then uh, as well on Sunday. So make sure you grab one of these. They're at the table in the back and then there's also some copies right here on this picnic table as well. Uh, I'm going to pray for us and then we will we will jump into worship. Dear God, thank you for beautiful weather. Um, thank you for, for cool breezes and just reminders of your goodness. God, we come and we worship you this morning and, and we ask that, that um, your, your spirit would make his presence known in our lives today uh, and that you would lead us and change us in the ways that you hope for us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I guess that's what happened last week. <laughs> How is everybody? Great. Pretty good. It feels so nice out here. I'm so happy. It feels like fall. It's going to be 90 degrees again this week. <laughs> Let's all stand and worship if you're if you're uh, so inclined. And this week, I have really been studying a lot about the presence of God in our midst while we're here. So this morning, I invite you as much as possible to close your eyes, feel the breeze on your face, and just really sink into the presence of God. It's all about having an encounter with God while we're here. So let's do that. Let's meet with God this morning. Let's pray. God, we welcome you here this morning. We know that you have been here before us, and you will be here long after us. And God, we ask that you would invade this space today. May, we, may every breeze we feel be you pouring into us and speaking to us, opening us up to what you have to teach us, how you intend to grow us. God, we just quiet our hearts right now as we sing of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Online on the foundrychurchsc.com are the lyrics. This song is Goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, 
All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend Oh, I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Let's sing that again, your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness Amen. God, we will sing of your goodness with all the breath that we have in us for all of our life. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what a beautiful day this Amen. is, isn't it? And we get to be outside in it. Um, uh, I'm excited to be here. You know, one of the most beautiful things about having the opportunity when we started to meet outside is like, uh, I hear Chip and Madison or whoever's leading us in worship each week practice. And if you go down at the bottom of that hill, it echoes. You can hear it echoing back. And so as they rehearse, I always listen for the echo when they worship. It's just a really cool effect and sound. But uh, Madison and Chip and really everybody who contributes uh, to bring music to our space, thank you for what you do wherever you are, wherever you went. Um, it's awesome. To have you. Hey, um, if you don't know me, my name is Ryan. I'm one of the pastors uh, here at Foundry. Uh, we are a new-ish church, started in January, uh, and we just are uh, people who love Jesus, who are just trying to get to a place where we're growing closer and closer to God. Um, and when we grow closer and closer to God, our heart changes for the people around us, uh, including our community, our neighbors, our co-workers, and things like that. And so, for the past three weeks, we've been talking about uh, this thing called discipleship bands and how to connect with each other and grow with each other. 
Um, we've been on this journey in some form or fashion, uh, really for a couple years, but officially as a church since January. Uh, and uh, we have decided that it's time that we really get intentional about discipleship uh, in a relational way. People forming uh, relationships with each other um, so that you just don't come to church and have songs sung to you or scripture read to you, but that you are gathering with people and you're reading scripture yourself and that you're encouraging one another uh, on and things like that. And there's reasons why, um, uh, lots of reasons that we've been talking about the last couple weeks why this is helpful. Um, it's proven statistically that if people connect with three or four other people um, in their church, in their faith community, uh, they're their desire to stick around, their desire to, to serve, their desire to grow in their faith and serve their community grows. Um, it's just statistically proven over just attending church um, weekly. Uh, another, another reason is, and this is the biggest reason that I'm going to touch on a little bit today, um, is that Jesus modeled this. He modeled it with his disciples, and even within his disciples, he had three or four people uh, that he consistently went with. Uh, and this is uh, an amazing thought to me because Jesus, we believe Jesus is God. He's fully human. Uh, he's also fully God. And yet Jesus thought it was imperative that he would spend time with people and share life with them and talk about things and challenge his disciples. And who knows what some of those conversations were like. Whether or not they were right to do it or not, we know that Jesus' disciples sometimes challenged him. And, uh, and they had that type of relationship. Um, I have valued um, those types of relationships uh, in my life. Uh, those relationships have improved my life. And so today, I'm talking about, well, if I'm going to form, if I'm going to be in a band, again, not a music band, but if I'm going to be in a band of sisters or a band of brothers, of people who would challenge and push me, what type of people do I join a band with? Like, do I just draw names out of a hat? Do I find people who are all exactly like me? Do I find people that are the opposite of me? Who do I do? How do I do this? Um, I read a quote this week um, that really jumped out at me. It says this. Uh, Jim Ron says this. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I'll say it again. You're the average of five people you spend the most time with. In other words, people we spend the most time with have a huge influence on who we're becoming. Um, and it's not the five people outside of your workplace or the five people outside of your family. It's the five people you spend the most time with that influence in who you become. And so that, that needs to be, I think, as we decide, as we as a church, and we're going to encourage and even use the word push for you to connect with other people in tension in your faith, you ask the question, who do I do this with? And that's an important question to ask. I often... But think about Jesus modeling this with his disciples, in particular with James and John and Peter. And I wonder if he looked at all those guys and says, yeah, those three guys could really help me. I mean, he's Jesus. He's God, right? Like, if anyone didn't need help, it's him. So it's not about necessarily choosing everyone who you perceive needs your help or is better than you. It's actually asking the question, who makes me better person. This impacted my life in a huge way a few years ago. I was in a discipleship band. Um, one of the guys in the band uh, was becoming a good friend. We were sharing things. And one of the things you do in a band um, is over time you build a level of trust. And one of the things it talks about a lot is confessing sins to one another. Sharing that with one another. And so, and there's this understanding that in a band uh, you're there for one another. That there's no judgment. Um, there's no condemnation that that's the safe place where you can go and if you've got something you need to confess or something you need to share you can do that in a band it doesn't happen overnight it happens over time um, and so there was an occasion where I confessed something in that group um, something that had been troubling something that had been really tripping my life up in a big way uh, impacting really all facets of my life and I shared it with my friend and he, he received it. And it got kind of weird for a few weeks, to be honest. Because what I didn't know is that he's a human being too. So what I confessed to him actually reminded him of a wound that he had from when he was a kid that he experienced with a parent. 
And so for two or three weeks, he kept his distance from me. But then he kind of came back to me and said, hey, I just want you to know that what you shared with me sent me on a journey to repair a relationship with my father. And so what initially was something that I said that disappointed him and made him angry and was, didn't want to hear from his good friend, it actually, as he thought about me and my life and our friendship and our relationship, it made him think about his dad. And it led him back to a path of reconciliation to his dad. It became healing. And so when you ask a question, who do I band with? Who do I join with? It's not always, you can't look for the, the four other, three or four other people who are, you, think, you think are better than you, so you can get better. Joining a band and becoming a disciple of Jesus, believe it or not, is that not actually about getting better. It's becoming more of the person that God created you to be. And sometimes when you're becoming the person that God created you to be, you, you hear people's confessions um, and you help them. And sometimes there are people that you confess to that, that, that help you in your healing. And sometimes you think you're confessing and you're actually inspiring somebody else to take a step forward in their faith. And so the question we have to ask is, is who do we, who do, not who do we become better or who makes us better Christians, who makes us appear to be better Christians, but who makes us more whole? Who makes us become more like Jesus? Sometimes becoming more like Jesus is about confessing sin. Sometimes becoming more like Jesus means forgiving. Sometimes uh, becoming more like Jesus means listening. Um, and other times it means asking questions. Uh, so who do you do that with? And while I don't want to say anyone, I want to say there are people that you know right away who you want to have that relationship with. Just do. They're comfortable. That makes sense. You know them. You already know them well, so there are really aren't really any big things to talk about. And then there's people who you think about, and you're like, that's the last person I would want to do that with. And maybe you're right, but maybe you're not. Maybe it's that person that you think is the last person that can say something to you that can grow. In fact, maybe some of the reasons that you're afraid of joining with that person are reasons that would actually cause you to grow if you stepped into that space. And then there's people that you don't know at all. That you're like, I'm curious about this person. Do that. And so, when we say, who do you band with? I would say to yourself, you're choosing people that you will begin a journey of trust with. And if any of you, most of you, I'm sure maybe even all of you at some point are in relationships of some type of significance. And when we say that word trust and what it looks like in a discipleship relationship, it's like a lot of other relationships. Trust takes time, right? And so I would challenge you to say, okay, so I'm going to go on a journey in my, in my faith. I'm going to become a disciple. Trusting people is a big part of that journey. Because... It's hard to be trusted by someone if you don't give that trust to someone else. And, um, and Jesus knew that. Jesus understood that. He was this perfect. He was God in the flesh. He was perfect. He was flawless. And yet he chose to enter into a trust relationship with people who he knew would not be trustworthy, perfect all the time. Yet he still did it. Um, you know, one of the things that we want Foundry to be um, you know, people toss around words when they talk about churches all the time. They say words like family, and they say words like organization and structure. And there's a word that I think of when I think of church, when I read about it in Scripture and understand it to be, is that there are aspects to those things that happened even in the early church. There was structure, there was organization. They were close with each other. They felt in some aspects like family. But what they really were were a community. They were a community of people who followed Jesus, who at times, when you peeled away their faith, had nothing else in common. They had different educational backgrounds. They had um, different upbringings. Uh, particularly in the early church, you had, first it was exclusively almost Jewish people, and then Gentiles came in who were very different, had very different customs, and there was tensions there, and you couldn't really say that that was a family right away. 
but it was a community. It was people who did hard work together to come together and grow in their faith. And so as we move forward, and there's several conversations happening about bands right now, um, even among the people who are here today, uh, and I'm excited about that. But I want to encourage you and challenge you as believers to not necessarily assume that the people that you're supposed to band with are the people that right now you necessarily think you have the most in common with. This is an opportunity for growth. This is an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do work in us. And you know, we talk about the Father, we talk about the Son. A lot of times in church, we don't talk about that third person a little bit because he, he freaks us out a little bit, the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is a person of God and is real. And it's known when you read through Scripture, the Holy Spirit operates through your friends, through your family, as much as He does the music, as much as He does um, the sermon. You know, I would love it if people said we had anointed worship music at Foundry. I think we do. I would love it even more if the people said that teaching was anointed. But if you asked, if I had to pick one thing about Foundry that are anointed, I would want it to be the friendships and the relationships that are formed here. And so Jesus is telling his disciples, this is the last thing he says, and he's basically saying, hey, yeah, there's a vertical thing going on with my Father in heaven. But just as importantly, there's this horizontal thing with your relationships with each other. That the Holy Spirit's going to come, going to come and empower transformation through those relationships. Something powerful happens when you look for people to connect with that don't always agree with you, that don't all, that aren't necessarily the same age as you, that don't have the same um, background growing up with you, the people that you. The band isn't about the four people that you can become the quickest friends with. There may be one or two of those in there, but also there should be people who challenge us and stretch us and cause us to grow and, and, and make us think. Um, and so as we journey, and I'm super excited um, about the coming weeks at Foundry. Uh, we're starting a series, Aubrey mentioned, called Peacemakers. We have books for you for reading would encourage you to take one as you leave today. When everyone to take a book, we might even like throw them at you as you leave today, okay? It's super important. So that we can be reading and meditating on the same scripture at the same time. And so maybe we'll show up one week and you'll we'll preach on the sermon that you've, that you've been reading all week and Aubrey and I will say something that you completely different, disagree with and we can argue about it, like in holy love. Like we can challenge each other, cause each other to grow. You can talk about that in your bands about what God is saying to you through that scripture. Because God speaks to me when I read his word and he speaks to you too and we might read the same thing on a Tuesday and you might read it on a Thursday and it says something to you that is different than me and we can have an incredible conversation around that. And those types of things are important and significant. We're talking about peacemakers. To be quite honest, we think it's strategic in our culture, in our world, to talk about what it means to bring peace and what it seems like in a place and time that needs it so much. There's lots of people trying to figure out what's wrong with us right now. And, and God has already offered that. And Jesus is a peacemaker. He's not a peacekeeper. He's a peacemaker. And he calls his disciples to be peacemakers. So as we journey forward, I'm excited that we're going to form bands together. And the first thing we're going to talk about is in this world, in this time, and in this space, what does it mean to be a peacemaker in our midst, in our towns, in our communities? Just two more scriptures for you from Proverbs that bring wisdom. It says this, Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous choose their friends carefully. And Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Jesus, at the end of his time on earth, called his disciples, not his servants, but his friends. All of his friends were vastly different than he was. And they were different from one another. But their calling was the same. And so it is with us. So may we go from this space today knowing that God has called not just your pastors, not just your leaders, 
but all of us, into intentional relationships that draw us closer to Him and challenge us and create growth. So with that, I'll close in prayer, and then we're going to sing a couple songs, uh, and then we'll fellowship. Let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you for friends. We thank you for the friends that have spoken into our lives and brought us through difficult times and cried with us and celebrated with us. God, we also thank you for the friends we don't even have yet, the people that you're going to bring and put in our lives that make us whole, that, that help us in our journey to be made more and more in your image, the image of your son, Jesus. God, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit, not in a passive way that, that makes us thank, but in a challenging way that calls us to action in our relationships, to grow, and to become more and more like you. God, we love you. We praise you. We say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand and worship. For I spoke a word, you were singing of me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, 
coming after me The snow wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me The snow shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me The snow wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me The snow shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me The snow wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me I'm found, leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God, yeah Coming today, um, just a quick reminder, put on your calendar for next Saturday at 2 o'clock via at Victor Park in Greer, um, be a part of that community event, uh, police versus the neighborhood basketball tournament, census voter registration, um, it's going to be a lot of fun, A lot. there'll be food there, um, so come, bring the family, uh, and hang out. Um, did we tell you that we have books? We have books. Uh, Make sure you grab one of those this week. You'll just open to the to the, kind of the second page and it'll say week one. And this is week one, so pick up there. Uh, before you leave today, we want you to mix and uh, uh, get to, you know, responsibly social distance, have some conversations. But find somebody you know before you leave today uh, and ask them, is there any place that uh, you've always wanted to go to but you've never been to um so do that somebody you don't know somebody you don't know yeah, yeah. somebody you don't know <laughs> somebody you don't know and ask them that question is there any place you've ever been to uh or you haven't been to that you want to go to foundry i butchered that you are sent <laughs> <laughs>